All right, well, uh, hello, everybody. I'm Justin Kennington from Crestron. I'm the product manager of our digital media project, product line. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about HD Base T and, and what it means to the industry, what it means to Crestron, and, uh, and how digital media integrates that technology into our broader solution. Um, I'm going to try and, uh, and avoid topics that I'm assuming you've been hearing about all day. So I'm not going to explain HD Base T. I'm not going to explain HDMI. Um, I'm just going to kind of jump right in and hope I don't bore you and hope I don't uh, skip too much. So let me know if you have any questions as we go as well. So things I want to talk about. We're in a digital world. HDMI has its problems. HD Base T offers solutions to some of those problems. I'm going to go over the digital media product line in brief, describe to you what it is, how it fits together, and how it uses HD Base T. I'm going to describe, talk a little bit about why Crestron chose HD Base T for our solution, and then I'll have some closing remarks. So we've moved into the digital world. Over the last couple of years, all of, all of Crestron's slide decks have been about terrifying people that the end of analog is coming. I sat down to make all my presentations for this year, and uh, as I was thinking about it, I thought, that, that, those slides are old. It's done. It's over. The, the digital transition happened, and we've all survived. We're all here. We're all dealing with it. I imagine everyone, everyone in the CDS show floor right now has installed some sort of digital system at some point, whether it's a simple HDMI satellite receiver to an AVR to a TV or a complicated you know, multi-format multi matrix. Everybody's dealing with it. And here we are. So we, we can agree to that. How did we get here? As I see it, two major market forces aligned neatly to drive us to this digital solution. The consumers want all the hot new features that HDMI can offer, multi-format, uh, multi-channel high-res audio, uh, 3D television support, 1080p content, and Hollywood wants to protect the content that they're providing. HDCP offers both of these groups a solution so they can now squeeze on the consumer electronics industry, that's us, to say, look, we've got to have a digital solution so that we can all get what we want out of this. So I think that's, that's how HDMI got to where it is today. And if you look around the marketplace, you see HDMI everywhere. Set-top boxes, cable boxes, streaming media boxes. You see it on Blu-ray players. As I was making this presentation, I just went to bestbuy.com just to see, click on the check boxes. They've got 45 Blu-ray players for sale on the website. Nine of them have a component video output today. I think a year from now, that number is going to be much smaller. So we can all agree that digital is here. So we'll, we assume that we know what HDMI is. Well, what are some of the problems with it, and, and how can HD Base T help us deal with those problems? As I see it, some of the key issues that HD Base T is, helps with are the distance limitations of HDMI, cable installation and infrastructure management, control of remote displays once you go these long distances, and then verification of your system once it's installed and commissioned and running. So the distance limitations, this one's pretty easy. There's no hard specification at all for HDMI and the maximum distance it can support. Instead, they define a certain set of performance characteristics that a, a finished cable must meet based on transmitter and receiver characteristics. It turns out in the real world, a, a realistic limit of HDMI cable is about 30 feet. If you use some more advanced techniques, equalization and, and playing with your driver some, you can extend that out to 50, 75, maybe even 100 feet, although at some point reliability comes into question. So HD Base T answers that problem with, with ease, right? You know, we can go 330 feet, we can go longer than that in some of the more advanced long reach modes, and distance becomes much less of an issue on a simple copper-based distribution solution. So let's talk about cable installation and infrastructure. We got to this point in life, we need HDMI, and we need to build a specification around it. And they built this wonderful specification that includes a high density 19 pin connector with small bendable little pins, no locking mechanism. Um, you can't terminate it in the field, so that means pulling it through conduit with the terminations on. And what do you do with this? Um, also, you can't easily test your HDMI cable. You buy it, you plug it in, you hope it works. Um, there are, of course, products out there that will test and verify an HDMI cable, but they're all highly specialized, expensive pieces of equipment. You're looking at spending five to $8,000 just to get in the door on some sort of field HDMI tester. How does HD Base T deal with that? Well, come on, they use standardized Cat5 category style cable that's easy to terminate. It's easy to pull through the walls. Um, you know how to terminate it. I'm sure anybody, any integrator who's been in the business for 10 years has been terminating Cat5 for 10 years. And the problem, the problem is solved. 
talk about control for remote displays, HD Base T had the sense to realize that carrying audio and video is not enough. You need to be able to talk to something on the other end because now my, my TV is 300 feet away from my source, it's 300 feet away from my control processor, it's 300 feet away from who knows what. So how do we get to it? Well, HD Base T has built in many, um, many control interfaces. There's an Ethernet channel, there's a low speed communication channel. And Crestron Digital Media uses those features to enable our own higher level of control. So each of our endpoints, transmitters and receivers, feature I.O. ports for RS-232, for infrared, for relays, for digital sensors. And we use those as an interface, as an extension of our control system interface. So now we can control those displays from the head end without any extra infrastructure cabling other than the category cable that we pulled for HD base T. How do, we, how do we do this? We use that Ethernet channel in the HD base T as a backbone for our control network. Now system verification, this is an interesting issue that people don't, don't think about until they've done this a few times, until they've been out in the field. You go to an installation, you plug everything in, you turn on the TV, you turn on the source. If you did everything right, it works. You've got a picture on the screen. Okay, now what? Does it really work? Are you done here? How, how do you know? What if that cable is a little marginal, um, your HDMI cable? What if it falls out? What if it wasn't plugged in entirely correctly? It's hard to verify all this physically, and the way you'll find out something went wrong is two weeks later when the end user calls back and says, hey, I can't watch cable TV anymore. Now you're rolling a truck again, and you're, paying, you're out of pocket. You're not making enough, as much money as you'd like on what should have been a simple installation. So digital media solves that problem with what we call our commissioning test report. This is something that you can run having completed installation and commissioning of your system. We've got a very simple button right there in our software tool. It says generate test report. Click that button and it spits out this beautiful PDF document that describes everything digital media knows about itself in your system. It describes the EDID that it sees on every display. It describes the EDID that you have chosen for every input. It describes the HDCP capabilities of every source, every repeater, every display. And most importantly, and this is a new feature that we've been able to add now that HD Base T is with us, we can actually measure the quality of your link channel. So if you've got a cable problem, digital media can go ask the, the Valens ICs, how do you feel about the quality of this link? We'll get that information back and then we provide it in a very simple, we use green, yellow, red. If you see a green light, it means your cable's good. If you're having a problem, it's elsewhere. If you see a red light, then you're probably not seeing video. If you see a yellow light, well, maybe it's working, maybe it's not. That's the interesting case, though. That yellow light means eh, maybe it works, but it's not as good as it should be. So let's go look at that cable. Let's re-terminate it. Let's inspect it for damage, um, and let's figure that out. Once you see green lights everywhere, once you see the EDID configuration that you'd expected, once you see the correct resolutions flowing through the system, now you know this is a system that's completed, that's working, and you can leave that job site feeling confident that you're not going back next month. So I've touched on a couple of digital media features. Now I want to talk about the digital media ecosystem in a little bit broader terms. At, at its core, digital media is a series of HDMI matrix switches. That's it. It's that simple. Now, you look at this diagram and say, you just told me it's HDMI switches and I see a bunch of component video inputs. What's going on there? So each of our input cards is essentially an analog to digital converter. It takes in whatever format you've provided, and we offer many different formats, converts that into an HDMI signal, and that HDMI signal is then fed into the matrix where it's switched, routed, and then sent out to the displays either locally or via our long distance uh, transport technologies. So here's an array of some of our baseband input cards. We, as you can see, we offer HDMI, SDI, component composite, S-Video, DVI, including uh, VGA on a DVI-I connector. So any of these formats can easily be converted into HDM HDMI format, which we can then put into our matrix and transport over HD base T or some of our other transport mechanisms. So don't get upset at me for this slide. HD base T is right there on top. <laughs> and HD base T is, is our overwhelmingly most popular transport mechanism. Um, it outsells our others about four to one. Um, so when you're, getting, when you're leaving that DM switch, you can go out on HD base T and travel 330 feet, or you can go out on some of our fiber solutions and go 1,000 feet or 12 kilometers, depending on the fiber technology that you choose. 
And the nice thing about digital media is you can mix and match this. So when you want the ease of HD base T in your building, use HD base T cards everywhere that you want it. And hey, you know what? I've got one run that has to make it out to the pool house 2,000 feet away. Throw in a single mode fiber card for that one output and you're good to go. So our technology comes in essentially three pieces. I've talked about the HDMI switches that we refer to as midpoints. Um, the other thing we have are endpoints, and these come in transmitter and receiver flavors. So what's a transmitter? This is a device that sits out some, some distance from your, from your head end. It accepts the different baseband video formats, whether HDMI, VGA, any number of video formats. These come in many shapes and sizes. Um, and then they output via one of our different transport mechanisms, including HD base T, and they send that signal to your head end so that it can be put into the matrix. So today we sell 12 different varieties of these transmitters, and three of them right now are based on HD base T, and that, that number is growing quickly. That's the, we have the most HD base T products in development of any of the other technologies. These are the HD base T I.O. cards, so when you have a transmitter, and you pl plug in your Cat5 cable, you run it back to the switch, and you plug it into a DM input card that's part of your switch. This might be right next to an HDMI card with a composite card below it. Well, here's a DM card for the Blu-ray player 150 feet away in the bedroom. Similarly, when you need to go out, there's a DM output card. You plug in your Cat5 to this DM output. You send it to a room controller that will convert it into HDMI, and off you go. So speaking of room controllers, these are uh, one of the key pieces of our technology. They accept whatever transport mechanism it is that that particular room controller is built for. In the case of HD base T, we take in that category 5 cable and then we provide local sort of baseband connections for your HDMI audio and video, sometimes for maybe an analog audio breakout, for infrared, RS-232, relay, sensor control, all these sorts of things. We have a few different varieties of these room boxes with different complements of ports and features on each one. Again, we have three of those in, in HD base T varieties, including our, our hottest selling uh, new, new product, which includes a video scaler in the room box itself. We built that on HDMI, uh, HD base T technology first. Yeah? If, if you come out from that box, fiber 1,000 feet. Well, fiber would go into this box 1,000 feet. Okay, and then would it carry HD base T signal? Well, we shouldn't. Fiber? Our, fiber tec our fiber technology is not HD base T. It's not related to HD base T. So when you have the three lengths of wire, you end up for one of the top was HD. Yes, that's right. But you, you can't run HD base T on fiber yet. That's correct. We can't do that yet. That's why I apologize to my HD base T friends in the room for, for having my fiber on that slide. <laughs> But the point is we can mix and match. So if you want HD base T, you can use it in your, in your system for inputs and outputs everywhere it makes sense. And if you happen to need one run of 600 feet, well, you don't have to, you don't have to give up on HD base T and use an entire fiber rack. You have a fiber input for that one input, and you can use HD base T everywhere else. One key new product of ours that I wanted to highlight here, which is based entirely on HD base T, is our new 6x6 um, matrix switch. Now this is all of the technology and features that I've just described to you about digital media compressed into a smaller, less expensive uh, unit. So here's a photograph of it and what you see is a very neat and clean front panel. It's two rack use high. It doesn't include any of the I.O. cards swappable of the main system, but it includes all the same technology, the same features and capabilities. We have very simply six HDMI inputs. We have one local HDMI output and then we have five HD base T outputs. And so those HD base T outputs are exactly compatible with the very same room controllers I just described for the mainline DM system. Yes, oh, that's a good point. You know, and I forgot to, I neglected to mention that in the system. So in our original switches that I showed you a minute ago, we have one unfortunate issue, which is that we, we didn't build DM, we built DM three years ago, not in anticipation of HD base T. And so we don't have a 48 volt power supply in that box. So instead, if you go back to our input cards, oops, one more. What you can see here, right, is we would put a PoE switch in the rack, and that is essentially your system power supply. Now you can just take you know, a cheapy Ethernet cable from the switch to this PoE in port, and there's no data communication through this port. However, having connected this, now this DM input port, or similarly this DM output port, will provide power to your endpoint, a transmitter or a room controller. 
Now on the 6x6, where we're designing it from the ground up around HD base T technology, all of those ports are PoE enabled with a 48 volt power supply inside the box. It, PoE itself is 48 volts, that's right. Crestron has historically just been a 24 volt company, so that's why everything in the big DM switches is 24 volts. So we've talked about HDMI, how HD base T helps with it. We've talked about the DM solution and, and its integration with HD base T. I want to speak a little bit about why did we choose to go with HD base T. We actually had an existing technology of digital media and HD base T. We refer to we refer to our current line of DM products as 8G. That's just our marketing name for them. And we have 8G Plus, which is our HD base T technology, and we have 8G Fiber, which is, as I mentioned, an unrelated uh, fiber technology. Um, but both of these represent a second generation of digital media switching and distribution. So when we already had a product out there in the market, really good and, and powerful in that space, why did we bother to design a whole new generation while, while nobody else had their first out yet? Well, it's the single wire solution. Our first, our first solution, or let me start another way. The single Cat5 carrying audio, video, ethernet, USB control, that's what we had envisioned for digital media from the start. Five years ago when we started this project, that's what we wanted. Three years ago when we started shipping digital media, that was just still not achievable with the technology available. So our first generation of copper-based products used two essentially four-pair category style cables, one of which was a highly specialized one gigahertz certified uh, video cable. The second was a standard Cat5 just as an ethernet channel. Um, and then a third, uh, essentially Crestnet, for those familiar with that, we call it DMNet for some subtle differences, but it's just four conductors, 24 volts in ground, um, and, a, and a differential communication channel. So the installer is faced with terminate the DMNet cable, which is easy, get out your tweaker and screw down the Phoenix connector, terminate the Cat5 cable, basically simple, you've been doing Cat5 your whole life, and then terminate the D cable, which is a very high-end, splined, shielded, um, cable plugging into a, a heavy-duty, fully shielded connector, and it's a very difficult termination to make and get right. Um, we, had, we had plenty of problems with our dealers calling up, hey, this doesn't work, hey, this doesn't work, and our answer was almost invariably, go redo your termination. And so they would, they would get mad at us because, well, I don't want to redo my termination again, but your termination is the problem. We're sorry it's hard, but that's the problem. So HD Base T has, has gotten us away from all that. We're back to a single cable, we're down to standard category 5E cabling, simple off-the-shelf connectors that everybody knows and loves and is familiar with. HD Base T carries everything that we need. You guys all know what HD Base T is capable of. We need high resolution audio and video, we need an ethernet channel, and we need a sideband communications channel. HD Base T offers all of that. You know what, we didn't really need power, but wow, you're gonna throw in power over ethernet for free as well? That's even better. And I can't, can't emphasize enough that standard infrastructure category cable um, has been a huge win for us. We recently, uh, we recently re loosened our specification to, to fully and completely allow the use of standard Cat5 e cabling, and we've been able to, to turn that into a nice marketing opportunity. We, Crestron, have sold over the last 10 years or so upwards of 30,000 analog component video distribution systems based on Cat5 e cabling. So now our customers, the integrators, have these thousands of end user customers of theirs out there who are sitting at home with their Cat5e in the wall to run their category, I mean, to run their component video analog switching system. Now they can go, the, end, the integrators can go to those end users and say, hey guys, let's talk about a Blu-ray player. Let's talk about that new DirecTV box. Let's upgrade you to digital. And we're not going to have to come in and tear your walls up and put in new cable and all that. We're just going to pull out these old boxes, put in these new boxes, and off you go. So we're even offering to our customers a buyback program of these analog switches uh, in order to entice them to go and buy more and more digital media and with HD base T technology. And without HD base T, we would not be able to do this. Question. Sure. Can you run into the Cat5 cable port issue? Um, I can speak to that. I can say that we've run into uh, a number of cables that say Cat5e on the outside, but my Fluke DTX 1800 disagrees with that assertion. <laughs> so um, 
as, as a major manufacturer whose customers are the big high-end integrators, we take, we take all of our training, documentation, and, and field support extremely seriously. So we have, there will be a link at the end of this, at the presentation if you want to go to it. We have tons of literature about how to deal with the DM system. And one of those, one of those key pieces is we call it our, our DM infrastructure guide. And that is about a five-page white paper that walks you through each of our different transport technologies, exactly which cables will work for each of those types of transports, exactly which cables won't work, and then also details on how to test and verify each type of cable depending on the technology that you're using. So to deal with that question, our rule is very simply, you should, you should ideally have a category network analyzer that you can plug in and you can verify that this cable meets the Cat 5e specification. If, I don't care if it says Cat 3 on the side, if it meets that spec, you're good. If it says Cat 7a on it and it doesn't meet that spec, then you're still no good. So we emphasize testing and verification of your cabling so that you can, you can move forward from the, ca from the cabling process to the installation and commissioning process with confidence that step one is complete. So the next thing I wanted to just bring up with HD Base T um, and digital media is, is the move to a standards-based world. Our first generation of DM, there's no way any other manufacturer out there is ever going to build a product that, that uses that same technology. I mean, it's completely homegrown, first of all, and we're not giving it away. So there you go. Not to mention, it's three cables. One of them is really ugly. So if I was giving it away, nobody might want it anyway, um, especially with HD Base T out there. So my philosophy, I've only been with Crestron about two years, and I came from Google before then, so maybe there's a little too much of that uh, hippie free spirit in me. But, uh, wow, I don't say that about myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I want to see the world that these HD based T guys, I think, are envisioning. And that's a world where HD based T can be an open standard that we can all adhere to and know that interoperability can happen. And then we can compete with each other on features, on performance, on capabilities, on reliability, and, you know, and then hell, on marketing and all that kind of fun junk, too. <laughs> but what I don't want is a world of walled gardens where, you know, I keep looking at my Atlona guys here. Lona's got their stuff, and Crestron has their stuff, and there's AMX and their stuff. And now a customer has to come into this world with too big a decision to make. Who do I want to commit my entire life to? You know, I just want to buy a video system that works. And if I buy it from Crestron, if I buy it from Atlona or Extron, you know, I want it to work today, I want it to work tomorrow, and maybe we can even plug these things in. Honestly, is anybody going to plug Crestron and Atlona? Maybe not. But maybe if you can plug into Samsung, and we can plug into Samsung, <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> you, ins you plug in a what? <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so as the guy driving all the digital media roadmap forward, this is something that's, that's important to me and that, that is a focus. Um, so HD Base T has been able to, to answer that call for me in ways that none of my other technology so far has been able to do. And now to brag a little bit, um, we've gotten good at this. Uh, we've now shipped 13,000 switches of the 8x8 class and above. We've, that represents over a quarter billion dollars in revenue since we started shipping almost three years ago. We've got a ton of experience at this. And you know we've had problems, we've had hiccups, we've had issues. But every single time we've had a problem on a job in the past, that represents today a solution in my system so that no new customer is going to have that problem. So get our stuff. <laughs> um, now, what I just referred to was digital media as a whole, not HD Base T. HD Base T is still a relatively new technology. So uh, I just wanted to show this. This represents. What is the retail for the last For which part? What do you mean? Thirteen thousand. When, uh, so the 13,000 units that I'm talking about, 8 by 8 chassis, 16 by 16 chassis, and 32 by 32 chassis. Well, right, and each one of those ships filled with some cards. So in very broad strokes, an 8 by 8 system is like 20 grand, a 16 is like 50, and a 32 is like 100. So this I wanted to demonstrate um, just how fast HD Base T as a technology has been ramping up for us. I, I see Malcolm is entirely thrilled with this graph. He's seen it before. Um, the red, oh, you know, I meant to change yellow for the projector, but I think it comes out okay. What kind of projector is this? 
good job, uh, maybe Epson, I don't know. Um, the red represents units sold of, these are, these are room boxes, so that's the room controller. I just use it as a sort of unit of amount of stuff that's been shipping, because pretty much every installation has some number of room boxes that, that relatively closely represents the size of that installation. So you can see, you know, from the beginning of digital media in that last quarter of 2008, we've got this huge ramp up in, in units shipped of these room boxes. These, the red ones represent our former copper technology. Um, here in the third quarter of 2010 is when we began shipping our HD base T product. You see it took two quarters to match our original copper technology. And then in our most, in the closing of our most recent fiscal year, it's blown it away. Uh, I mean, so HD base T has taken over in a huge way. Our customers love it, we love it, and it works. And I've been an engineer long enough to know that the only thing that matters about a product is does it work? So wrapping up, I think we've hit the beginning of an extremely important new era. I mean, there was TV, there was color TV, there was HD TV, and now there's everything is digital TV. So this whole industry is at just the beginning of a major shift, and I think now is a time that we can make sure to get to a stan that standards-based dream that I have for the world. I mean, there was a time when it was composite video, and you know what? Everything did plug in with everything. Now we've gone to digital, and it's so easy to make digital not play nicely together. Um, but I think HD Base T offers all of us an opportunity to ensure that the world can play nicely together. And the way I see it, the, the, better, the better this stuff works, the bigger the whole market is. And then we can be fighting over shares in a much bigger pie in the first place, and everybody wins. So, so far, in my opinion, uh, Crestron Digital Media has, has been the standards bearer for HDMI, for HD Base T, and for high end you know, video re uh, distribution. And we want to keep that. We want to use, with HD Base T's help, and, and nothing. We want to do it. <laughs> So uh, I'll let you guys ask any questions if you want. This link here is the link I referred to earlier to our, uh, our digital media uh, documentation page. This will teach you everything you need to know from a high level about infrastructure cabling, about TCP networking and how that interacts with digital media, and uh, those sorts of white papers and things. So any questions? I, I sure. Retail on the 6x6 is $5,000. And we also have a 6x4, which deletes two, two, HG, two HD base T outputs for 3800 Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's correct. We've had one of the, I forget what NDAs I'm under, so I won't say who, but one of the major display manufacturers has brought over, here's our prototype HD base T projector. And it was kind of a funny morning because, you know, I was excited for them to come. I had three or four of my engineers ready to make this stupid thing work. They brought three or four guys and a couple of projectors. And we go out in the lab, and I think I did it. Like, I take the Cat5 cable coming out of the 8x8, and I plug it into this projector and kind of stand back nervously, and then just video appears. It's like, well, do you guys want to go to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, to test the cables themselves, I mean. Oh, to test the cables. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Okay, yeah, no. Just you, you're in the field, you've got a cable, something's wrong, is it my cable? Yeah. Without a Quantum 780, I don't know. Oh yeah, we buy a few of those, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do, on that little monitor, that's great. Thanks for that. No problem. <laughs> Um, you know, I kind of glossed over that. Uh, we do have some products. There's a couple of responses to that. Number one, the transmitters and room boxes that I described to you, they can be plugged into one another without a switch in the middle. So there you go. Um, and then that allows you, those are, then they're still TCP IP devices, so you plug one of them into the LAN, and the other one is connected to the LAN automatically through the HD base T. Now your control system can speak to both devices and activate its control ports. Um, in addition to those, we also offer a lower cost uh, product line of our HD extenders, we call them. We have two lines, sort of. There's the DM stuff, and then there's the H HD stuff. So the HD is lower, it doesn't plug into the big DM systems, but it offers some products, for example, like our 
uh, extenders that are just a transmitter or a receiver, run your Cat5 between them, and we carry a few extra things. There's a few products, so it depends on which one, but we might carry uh, infrared through there, we might carry serial, we might carry analog audio on a sideband, uh, things of that nature. Yes, in, uh, we, uh, we, have, we have two copper ones and two fiber ones. The copper ones are HD base T. And I'll, I'll say at this point, we have, we have no further development of our original DM technology. Everything copper is HD base T for us. <laughs> Malcolm is terribly upset by that. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Cool. Well, then it's a wrap. Have a uh, good last day of the show, everybody. Sure.